uh, in this lecture we will discuss on something known as a state space representation I specifically discuss it for uh, linear systems before we see what a state space representation is we will attempt a few uh, problems where we need to come up with the uh, system models okay so the first system that we will consider is a popular spring mass damper system so let's say that this is a rigid surface there is this mass the surface is frictionless and to this rigid wall a spring is attached which is attached to the mass as well and then you also have a damper okay so the restoring force exerted by the spring is basically directly proportional uh, to the displacement in the spring or the stretch or compression in the spring and is dependent on the spring constant and the force due to the damper is directly proportional to the velocity at which this mass would be moving and the damping coefficient let us call it label it as b okay let the force acting on the mass be represented as f and the displacement of the mass is let's say represented by y okay so k is your spring constant b is the damping coefficient f is the force applied on the mass y is the displacement of the mass okay so we will also use y dot which is nothing but the rate of change of displacement which is essentially the velocity of the mass and similarly we will have y double dot which is basically the derivative of the velocity and will be the acceleration of the mass so from the force balance equation what we can see is my double dot plus okay, let us label this as small m okay my double dot plus by dot plus ky to be equal to the force that is applied okay similarly let's say that uh, we consider another system another mechanical system which is possibly of this form so you have a rigid wall and a rigid floor the floor is assumed to be frictionless and let's say that you have two masses one is m1 and another is m2 connected by springs okay so there is a wall here as well so the spring constant is k1 the spring constant for this is k2 and the spring constant for this is k1 okay the displacement of mass 1 is y1 and the displacement of mass 2 is y2 
and their corresponding derivatives would be the velocities and the derivative of the velocity would be the acceleration okay so the force acting on let's say mass 1 is u1 and the force acting on mass 2 is u2 if we write the force balance equation what we essentially have is m1 y1 double dot plus k1 y1 which is because of the first spring here on the left hand side of m1 and then k2 you'll experience a force because of y1 and a force because of y2 okay this is totally equal to u1 okay similarly the mass m2 will have the following force balance equations which is this okay so in this case the displacements y1 and y2 and the velocities y1 dot and uh, y2 dot are basically dependent or can be calculated from the forces u1 uh, are uh, related to the forces u1 and u2 through these differential equations in the first case as well the velocity y dot and the displacement y was related to the force applied f through this differential equation basically these differential equations tell you how the system is going to evolve when a force is applied so how the displacement uh, vector would evolve when the force is applied to the mass okay similarly you can have some electrical systems as well uh, let us say that we have a electrical system which is of this form so you have a resistor whose resistance is R then you have a capacitor with a capacitance value of let's say C1 another capacitor with a capacitance value of let's say C2 and a inductor L with the inductance L okay this is connected to some independent voltage source we'll label this as u so the voltage source is the input to the system of these passive components so let's say that the voltage across the capacitor c1 is v1 the voltage across capacitor c2 is v2 and the current through the inductor l is i l okay so from this we can also see that the voltage across the resistance would be u minus v1 so in this circuit we have three energy storage elements which is the two which are the two capacitors and the one inductor so the first equation that we'll have that describes the circuit is i l to be equal to c2 v2 dot the second equation that we we'll have is the current through the register is equal to 
the current through capacitor 1 and the current through the capacitor 2 ok the current through the capacitor 1 is C1 V1 dot and the current through the capacitor 2 is nothing but the IL itself the third equation that we have means that talks about the rate of change of the current IL so L I L dot is equal to V1 minus V. So these three differential equations which are pertaining to the rate of change of voltage V1 and V2 and the rate of change of the current I L describe the behavior of this electrical circuit when subjected to a voltage profile given by V. Okay. Similarly, if you have a unmanned aerial vehicle, you can come up with its mathematical model by applying your knowledge of uh, physics and using energy conservation wherever possible to get a set of differential equations along with some algebraic equations possibly. Uh, so that it describes the entire system behavior okay, or the behavior of the system that you are actually uh, interested in okay so let's say that in the first case in the spring mass damper system the outputs of interest is the displacement y and the velocity y dot in the second case let's say the outputs of interest are only the displacements uh, y1 and y2 and in the third case, let us say the output of interest is the voltage across the capacitor C2, which is V2. Okay. All these, you can verify that uh, whatever we have considered here are linear systems. So these systems can be represented in the form of x dot is equal to at x p plus b t u t and y or I should say and use the capital X of the means and capital X dot of T is equal to this and Y of T is equal to this. All these equations can be represented by the use of first order difference all these systems can be represented by the use of first order differential equation and some algebraic equation. So the first part is basically a set of first order ordinary differential equations. Second part is a set of algebraic equations. Okay, where the x is known as the state vector u is the input vector and y is the output vector. You already know what input and what output is. What is the new term that you are seeing is the state. So the state vector which is essentially let's say a collection or a vector that contains n tuples where each of the tuple is known as a state variable. So this state 
is a fictitious will. Okay. That helps in expressing an or yeah that helps in expressing a system in its something known as the state space form okay so what we see here is essentially known as the state space representation of the system the size of the state vector depends on the order of the system and it is n cross 1 u denotes the number of inputs to which the system is subjected to and y denotes the number of outputs which we are interested in so this gives me that a is of the size n cross n b is of the size n cross m C is of the size P cross N and D is of the size P cross N. In the next discussion, we will take up these three examples that we have discussed in the lectures and try to represent it in the corresponding state space representation. We will stop here. Thank you.